Greetings, everyone. Thank you so much uh, for coming to this YouTube channel. My name is Dr. Brian Myler. I'm a psychiatrist by profession, and uh, I'm glad today to be talking about Rolida Institute of Technology. And my focus today is talking about graduate aid for those that may be seeking to pursue their master's degree um, or their PhD at Florida Institute of Technology. You will realize that graduate assistantships and loans tend to help make graduate school affordable and Florida Institute of Technology seems to offer research assistantship, as well as teaching assistantship programs. When you click on this link here, you will come to the funding graduate studies section, which talks about how to fund your graduate degree program. So probably that tech, no, tech invests in our graduate students' future success by making substantial contributions in form of assistantships and fellowships to offset the cost of tuition. As a result, many graduate students find that the net cost of their advanced degree is far less than the published tuition. So the university also works with the federal government to make affordable loan programs available to enrolling graduate uh, students. And so if you would like to learn a little bit more about this form of financial aid being offered by Florida Institute of Technology, you may feel free to schedule a meeting with the Office of Financial Aid for further assistance. Now, I'd like to just go a little bit further into this particular program, graduate teaching and research assistantships at this particular university. Uh, here it says that well-qualified students are offered, offered admission to a Florida Tech master's or doctoral program at the Melbourne Florida campus may be eligible for a graduate assistantship. Typically, graduate assistantships provide students with a wage, tuition, waiver, or both in exchange for teaching or research assistance. Going a little bit further into this, we find here some guidelines about graduate student assistantship, employment, and contracts. So what you see here is that uh, putting things into context, academic units at Florida take provide graduate assistantships to full-time degree-seeking graduate students on a competitive basis. Graduate student assistants play an important role at Florida Tech and function both as graduate students and as professionals whose formal graduate studies are complemented through teaching conducting research under the supervision of a faculty and all other tasks assigned by the employing academic unit. The number of positions will usually depend on the funding available for the academic unit that is hiring in the university. And indeed, the amount of grant funding that is coming in externally for into thy university. Um, there are basically two types of graduate student assistantships. So there's teaching assistantship. So for this one, um, the graduate student assistance program, the roles may include teaching, grading, holding office hours, tutoring, training undergraduate students and other tasks involving interaction with students. Uh, in terms of research assistantship, these individuals will work 
with faculty members on research projects supported by governmental and private sponsors and invest research funds. So in many cases, these projects are directly related to the student's thesis or dissertation research. Full tuition scholarships are available for graduate research assistants working toward a doctoral degree through the doctoral graduate research assistant tuition scholarship program. And so the student will undergo periodic evaluation by the faculty supervisor in order to determine uh, whether their scholarship or assistantship program will be renewed um, for the next semester. So there are some eligibility and qualification requirements for graduate research as outlined below. So one, first of all, needs to be a full-time degree-seeking student in or accepted into a Melbourne campus graduate degree program at Florida Tech. Full-time enrollment is considered to be nine credit hours, graduate coursework, or a full load graduate course in academic semesters. That is the fall or the spring, and three credit hours of graduate coursework in summer. If a graduate assistant is not in the final semester of the program of study, the number of registered semester hours may be less than the full-time load requirement. Number two, if someone maintains a minimum cumulative grade point or GPA of 3.0 for master's program students or 3.2 for doctoral program students. Students who are on academic probation uh, or academically dismissed may not qualify for this particular program. Those seeking this particular program may need to meet any additional academic qualification for the graduate student assistant position as specified by the hiring academic unit. For all first-time teaching assistants, all newly hired teaching assistants are required to successively complete the teaching assistant seminar prior to the semester they are expected to start teaching in. In the case of international students, additional requirements such as English proficiency may be needed for participation in this particular program. So for teaching, you may wish to know that the scores are different between teaching assistants and research assistants. So like you can see here that if you want to be a teaching assistant, you need to have scored 100 points on the TOEFL, IBT um, proficiency, English proficiency exam. In, in, the, in the case of the IELTS, you may need to have scored 7.0. If in the case of the Pearson testing exam, you may need to score 70. Uh, for the Cambridge, a grade of B. For the Freud that take TOEFL, you will need to score 600. And on the Dolingo English test, 120. And in the case of the Embassy English, C1. So what you seem to see here is that there are basically differences in terms of the scores that one requires if they want to become a teaching assistant and the scores that one requires if they want to become a research assistant at this particular university. So the scores are slightly higher if you want to become a teaching assistant and slightly lower if you want to become a research assistant, like you can see on this particular uh, illustration. And one thing that is worth noting is that the eligibility requirement exceptions may be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. And so 
waivers may actually be done by an approval that may need to uh, be sanctioned by the provost within the academic unit or that one is actually applying to through the respective college dean. So when it comes to the contract requirements for this particular program, which is specific for doctoral graduate research assistant tuition scholarships, it is required that students be full-time in a particular graduate program. And this program actually offers full tuition scholarships to full-time graduate research assistants, doctoral students who are supported by stipends charged to research grant or contract from a complete semester or supported by a full national fellowship. And guys, this is actually open to both US nationals as well as international students. To be eligible for this particular contract, a graduate student must meet the following requirements. First, be a full-time doctoral level student who has earned a master's degree in an identical or related discipline or who has completed a minimum of 18 credits towards their doctoral degree program. A minimum grade point of 3.2 is required. A GPA of 3.2 is required. For in the case of international students, uh, like I area on highlighted, English proficiency uh, exam may be required. And these are the scores that one needs to have if they are to actually go for this particular uh, program. Now, I'd like to just highlight a little bit on the application process for these particular programs. Let's go to graduate admission. So when you come to graduate admission, these are basically uh, the application requirements. So first of all, one needs to meet the application fee requirement. So when you will be applying, you'll notice that for master's level of study, the $60 application fee is required. And in the case of doctoral studies, an $80 is required. And this must accompany your application. The application fee will be waived for free that take alumni who wish to return to their alma mater for a graduate uh, degree. One may be required to submit official transcripts. So an official certified transcript from each institution where 12 or more credits were earned must be sent to the Office of Graduate Assistance, uh, uh, Graduate Admissions by the registrar of each college or university the applicant has attended. And for international applicants, in case your university level education experience outside the US was not conducted in English, you may need to translate all your qualifications into English. Recommendations is another requirement that one needs to meet. Morning. Ah, I'm not sure. So in terms of recommendations, one needs to submit recommendations which may come from their previous advisors, mentors, professors, or supervisors. So some academic departments require a recommendation as part of their graduate application. A recommendation to speak to the applicant's prior academic and professional performance 
as well as their potential for success in graduate studies. When recommendations are required, doctoral degree applicants should seek at least one from a full-time faculty member. Master's degree applicants are advised to request a recommendation for their master's thesis or final project advisor. You may need to submit a, res a, res a resume. So in case of the resume, you submit as part of your application for graduate admission, which should have the following details, academic credentials, prior employment, including teaching experience if applicable, and scholarly achievements, including but not limited to authorship, publications, conference participation, and memberships in professional organizations, applicants are encouraged to also include descriptions of relevant non-traditional educational and professional uh, experiences. This could be community activities that you do as some volunteer work or on a voluntary basis. And statement of objectives is another important requirement that you need to uh, consider in your application procedure. So departments requesting a statement of objectives are interested in learning more about an applicant's character, qualities, and aspirations as they relate to rigorous graduate study and research in a specific field of study. A well-written statement of objectives provides a clear concise, usually about 300 words description of the applicant's academic interest and career goals, as well as previous and proposed future scholarly uh, activities. In the case of the Doctor of Business Administration program, one may submit the research proposal as an alternative to the statement of objectives. Other requirements include the graduate record examination, and you may wish to note that uh, for, for, for this one, there is a waiver for, for this, which they highlight as this requirement has been waived through and including summer 2023 for applicants to selected Master of Science, Master's Science and PhD programs. Please refer to the program specific application requirements table below for requirements for your particular program of interest. Another one is the graduate management admission test, the GMAT. Again, there is a waiver on some programs at both master's and PhD uh, level. And then there's the English proficiency uh, requirements. I've highlighted some of these when it comes to the graduate research assistantship and graduate teaching assistantship program. And then you need also to submit an assistantship application. And the requirements for these are been highlighted uh, in the previous uh, sections of this particular talk. There are some important dates and deadlines that you need to pay attention to, but one thing to note is that in most graduate programs at Florida Tech, there is admission happening on a rolling basis, meaning there are no deadlines per se in most programs. However, it is strongly recommended that the following dates be followed to ensure admission consideration for the requested semester of entrance. In application received after the recommended filing date will be considered, however, may be at a disadvantage for graduate school admissions. And so for some specific programs, one may need to pay attention to certain dates. So for example, for the programs that have been listed here, the new students that have been enrolled in these programs may only start at the beginning of the fall term only for these programs. 
And for biotechnology, a master's program, new students in this particular program may only start at the beginning of the fall or spring term. There will be no summer uh, students in this particular program. Let's look at these application dates and deadlines. And so in the clinical psychology psych D program, application should be submitted by December 1. Well as in behavioral analysis, PhD program, industrial and organization psychology, master's program, industrial and organization psychology, the PhD program, applications can be, should be submitted by January 15. On the other hand, applied behavior analysis master's program, applied behavior analysis and organization behavior management master's program and organization behavior master's programs. These applications should be submitted by February 15th. Let's look at the international student deadlines and see what they have to say on this. International students must complete immigration procedures that may that may take a substantial amount of time. The following are suggested deadlines for students who will need to schedule an F1 visa, US embassy appointment on time for the upcoming term. And so if you are interested to join Florida Institute of Technology in the fall semester, this is a semester which starts somewhere around August, July, August, then you may need to have submitted your application by mid-June for for the fall semester. In case of the spring semester, this is a semester which begins somewhere around January. So mid-October should be your deadline for submitting of application documents. And in the case of the summer, then by mid-March. There's this section on program-specific application requirements. So you can see here that this program, Accounting and Financial Forensics, at master's level, these are the requirements of each of transcripts. There is the me or CV, two recommendation letters, and the statement of objectives. Yeah. Acquisition and Contract Management, master's program, only requires transcripts and resume. Aerospace engineering at master's level, transcripts, resume, two recommendation letters, statement of objectives. Whereas when it comes to PhD for the same program, one requires the GRIE or GMAT score as part of the submission. So this is just uh, re-emphasizing the point that I made earlier on that uh, the GRIE and GMAT scores have been waived for some programs, while some other programs still require it. And so it's important to look at the program specific requirements if you are thinking of applying to this uh, university. So you can see here some of the programs, the list is the list is really going on and on and on. And this is something that you can actually do on your own, basically looking at the different programs and then seeing which program resonates with your interests. I thought of bringing this wonderful opportunity, which I would encourage those with an interest to pursue graduate level of studies at Florida Institute of Technology or in the United States to consider 
um, taking advantage of this particular opportunity. And it's been Brian Myla, your friend who really cares about you and interested in making sure that you secure an opportunity for graduate study so that you can further your studies in the United States and perhaps in another part of the world, wherever the scholarship opportunity finds you. And so I would encourage you to subscribe if it's your first time coming to this channel. And if it, you are a returning visitor to this channel, I still encourage you to subscribe and hit the like button so that each time I upload such kind of videos, you may receive notifications. And encourage others to also subscribe to this particular channel by sharing this video and many other videos that I will keep uploading on this uh, wonderful channel, your channel on the BMIK TV, the platform that seeks to share opportunities that will help you to become the best that you can become. And looking forward to that time when we can celebrate your achievements. Hit that subscribe button. Until next time, thank you very much.